Hey y'all, Brian here, and it's time for me to weigh in on the classic matchup. Traditional versus Roth IRA is an important battle in the world of retirement investing, and I think it's about time this issue was solved. I will deliver, with mathematical certainty, the superior retirement investing account with minimal caveats. Let's get into it. I'm going to showcase three different investment scenarios for this analysis, so be sure to stay with me until the end. First things first, a quick and dirty explanation for these two investment vehicles. Roth and traditional IRAs are investment accounts. They are similar to your typical brokerage account in that you can invest in different investment funds or even individual stocks. Where these two accounts differ from your standard brokerage account is in the tax treatment. When you invest in a typical brokerage account, you first pay taxes on your income, then you fund your brokerage account and pick your investments. You are taxed on the dividends you receive, and when you sell your shares, you are taxed on the gains. As a quick tax tangent, both dividends and capital gains from your stocks or shares are taxed as regular income unless you have owned them for longer than one year. At that point, they are taxed in a more favorable tax bracket called the long-term capital gains tax bracket. Since we're analyzing these accounts through the lens of retirement investing, I will use long-term capital gains instead of short-term capital gains. The traditional IRA is funded with pre-tax dollars. This means that you do not need to pay income tax on the money that you put into your traditional IRA, which lowers your total tax bill. On top of that, anything that happens within the account is not taxed. That includes dividends and capital gains. As long as you do not withdraw the money from the account, you will not be taxed. Once you do withdraw though, you are taxed in the ordinary income tax bracket. The Roth IRA on the other hand is funded with post-tax dollars. Just like with the typical brokerage account, you still have to pay taxes on the income that you use to fund the Roth IRA. Once the money is in the account, it behaves similarly to the traditional IRA. Dividends and capital gains are not taxed. Where the Roth IRA really shines though is when you withdraw the cash from the account, you do not pay any taxes at all. Nothing on the gains or the dividends. So to quickly recap, for a typical brokerage account, you work and make money, you pay taxes on that money, then you put the money in your account and invest. And then as that money increases in value, you pay taxes on it again. For the traditional IRA, you work and make money, you put it in the account without paying taxes, and then when you pull it out of the account, that's when you pay the taxes. For the Roth IRA, you work and make money, you pay taxes on that money. When you put it in the account and invest, you get the benefit of not paying taxes on any of your gains at all. Now that you understand the two combatants, let's dive into how these details play out in real life. In 2023, the maximum amount of money you can invest in an IRA, traditional or Roth, is $6,500 for somebody that's under 50 years old. That being said, if you make more than 73,000 in one year, you are not allowed to contribute the full amount to the traditional IRA. For the Roth IRA, the cap is much higher. You can make as much as 138,000 in a year until you are no longer allowed to contribute the full amount to the Roth. So if you are making more than 73,000, you really don't have much of a choice. You'll have to go with the Roth. With that in mind, I'm gonna assume you have a maximum annual salary of 73,000 for the sake of this analysis. I will also assume that you are 30 years old and plan to retire at 65, which is the average age for retirement, and will only be investing in your IRA of choice. The investments will be the same in each IRA, and therefore the investment returns will also be the same, so that we can have an apples to apples comparison between the Roth and the traditional. So you will put that money into the account at the age of 30, it will grow for 35 years, and then you will spend that chunk when you retire at 65. The amount of money that you invest at 31 will also grow 35 years and be spent at the age of 66. The amount invested at the age of 32 will grow 35 years and be spent at the age of 67, so on and so on. In that way, you will invest for 35 years and you will have 35 years of income from the age of 65 to 100. Let's start with the traditional IRA. The primary advantage of the traditional IRA is that you get to invest pre-tax dollars. With an income of 73,000, your top tax bracket is 22%. This means that every dollar you invest in your traditional IRA is taken out of your total income before tax is applied. 
Let me show you an example using real numbers how this plays out with your yearly salary. If you make $73,000 per year after federal income tax and after Social Security tax and Medicare tax, etc., your take home pay is about $59,100. If you first invest the full $6,500 into a traditional IRA, you reduce your taxes and deductions by 22% of $6,500. Before, you were paying about $14,000 in taxes every year, and now you're only paying about $12,500 in taxes. This means that you get to invest $6,500 and you get to save about $1,500 in taxes, which you can invest in another account. Unfortunately, you cannot put that tax savings in your traditional IRA or Roth IRA because you are already capped out on IRA contributions. To keep things simple for this competition, we will assume that you only have $5,000 to invest. After all the bills are paid, your groceries, you take your vacation, etc., there is only $5,000 available for retirement investing. If you choose to invest in the Roth, then you can only invest $5,000. But if you choose to invest in the traditional IRA, you can invest more because of the 22% tax savings, which comes out to a total yearly investment of $6,410. Let's check out this flow chart so we can better visualize how taxes are affected when you put money in your traditional IRA versus Roth IRA. Here we can see in both cases with the Roth and the traditional, we have a salary of 73,000, but with the Roth, you have to pay taxes first on that $73,000 salary. So your remaining cash, you're down to $59,100. And if you can afford to invest $5,000 into your Roth, then that leaves $54,100 left for your expenses, whatever those are. Now, with the traditional IRA, before paying taxes, you get to shield your investment from those taxes. And then your remaining cash is a smaller amount. Thus, you pay a smaller amount of taxes. You can see in this case, you only pay 12,490 compared to the 13,900 in the Roth IRA example. You can see that even though you have a larger investment, the 6,400 investment compared to the $5,000 investment, you're still left with the same cash for expenses. The traditional IRA investor gets a 22% boost at the beginning, but the Roth IRA investor will get a tax advantage at the end because all cash withdrawn is tax-free. Now let's calculate how much money you end up with after 35 years of investing and it's time to start taking your money out. Taking the money out is where the Roth shines over the traditional 401k, but will it be enough? Both accounts will be invested in the S&P 500 for the complete duration of the competition. The S&P 500 has a historical annualized return of 6.632%, which assumes dividends are reinvested the whole time and the total return is adjusted for inflation. At the big point, all of our calculations will be adjusted for inflation so we can look at our result in today's dollars, which is just easier to visualize. So using this investment return calculator and assuming historical annualized returns and historical inflation, the traditional IRA S&P 500 investment of $6,410 at the age of 30 will be worth $60,663 after 35 years of investing at the age of 65. The Roth IRA S&P 500 investment of $5,000 at the age of 30 will be worth $47,319 after 35 years of investing. But keep in mind, at 65 years old, you will also have access to your social security payments, which will impact our calculations. In both scenarios, the amount you're making is 73,000 per year at the age of 30. But using this calculator, the estimated social security benefit per year, starting at the age of 65, will be about $27,684. Now this brings the total cash at the age of 65 for the traditional IRA investor up to $88,387. The total yearly cash of the Roth IRA investor, on the other hand, is only up to $75,000. This difference seems pretty large, but now we must calculate how much paying taxes will affect withdrawing this cash from the different accounts. The Roth IRA investor is only taxed on the Social Security benefit. Now, you are not taxed on all of your Social Security, but in this case, 85% of the Social Security benefit is taxed under the regular income tax bracket. To me, this seems ridiculous to be taxed since we are already taxed our whole working lives to pay for Social Security. 
but whatever, that's beside the point. After paying less than $1,000 in taxes on the Social Security, the Roth IRA investor is left with $74,035 to spend for the year. Not bad. On the other hand, the traditional IRA investor has to pay income taxes on the Social Security and the entire amount withdrawn from the traditional IRA, which comes out to nearly $11,000 in taxes. But even though the tax bill is more than 10 times higher, the traditional IRA comes out on top with an after-tax income of $77,565, winning by $3,530 per year. The secret to understanding why the traditional IRA wins lies in the progressive tax structure. When you put money into the IRA, you are saving taxes at the highest tax bracket for 100% of the money that you invest. But when you take that money out, the first chunk is taxed at 0%. The second chunk is taxed at 10%, the third at 12%, and finally the fourth chunk, which is only a small part of the whole, is taxed at the full 22%. Contrast this with the Roth IRA, where 100% of the money that you put in is still taxed at the highest tax bracket. And when you take the money out, you are saving 0% on the first chunk, and then you're only saving 10% on the second chunk, and so on. In conclusion, the traditional IRA wins when you are able to save big taxes up front, in this case, 22%. So you may be asking, what happens if your tax bracket is lower than 22%? If you actually did ask that, well done, because that is a great question. Let's see what happens if your income is $58,000 per year, which makes your top tax bracket 12%. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you are enjoying the video, please give me a like down below. It helps with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. The first thing that gets affected is the bonus investment due to the tax savings that the traditional IRA investor enjoyed in the previous example. Since we are now in a lower tax bracket, the tax savings are reduced from 22% down to 12%. If we keep our assumptions that you can only afford to invest $5,000 after taxes, then the traditional IRA investor can deposit 5,682. The Roth IRA investor is unaffected at this stage since the Roth deposits are post-tax. Using the same assumptions as before, dividends reinvested, inflation adjusted, and historical annualized returns, the Roth IRA still ends up with $47,319, but the traditional IRA is down to $53,773 after being invested for 35 years. That's nearly a $7,000 difference from the previous example. Finally, after paying taxes to withdraw the money, the Roth IRA actually comes out on top with an after-tax withdrawal of $70,280 compared to the traditional IRA of $68,854 after tax. Now our conclusion gets refined a little bit. The superior account depends on what your taxes are at the time of your investment. In this scenario, keep in mind that we are also assuming our entire retirement income is coming from the one account and Social Security. If we start to factor other sources of income into the equation, then the tax calculations do change a bit. Which brings us to our next example. Now, I know some of you are asking, what if I want to top off my IRA by investing the full $6,500? Does the advantage disappear? No, but the results might surprise you. If you are topping off your traditional IRA, then you will have to make use of a different investing account for your tax savings. For this next comparison, we will invest our tax savings into a standard brokerage account that is not shielded from taxes. In this example, we will assume an income of 73,000 and we will use the same market returns as the previous examples. We are back up to the 22% tax bracket, so the traditional IRA investor saves 1,430 bucks when 6,500 is deposited into the traditional IRA. To put this another way, with a $73,000 salary, you can expect to take home about 61,500 after taxes and deductions. If you invest 6,500 into your pre-tax traditional IRA, then your take-home income only decreases by $5,070 because of the tax savings of $1,430. So for this comparison, we will take that additional $1,430 and invest it in a standard brokerage account. Using the same assumptions for historical annualized returns and adjusted for inflation, both the Roth and traditional IRAs 
start at $6,500 and both appreciate over the 35 years to about $61,515. However, the traditional IRA investor also invested $1,430 in a standard brokerage account over the same 35 year period, which appreciates to about $13,533. Before taxes, this is a huge edge for the traditional IRA investor. Let's see how much paying taxes will even the playing field though. After adding up the expected social security benefit, traditional IRA account value, and standard brokerage account value, we have a total annual income of $102,732 before tax for the traditional IRA account investor. After paying long-term capital gains on the standard brokerage account and regular income tax on the social security and the traditional IRA account value, we get an after-tax income of $89,950. Now let's compare this to the Roth. The Roth IRA investor also has an expected social security benefit of 27,684 and an IRA balance of 61,515, which comes out to a total of 89,200 in available annual spending. However, after paying the small amount of taxes on the social security benefit, the after-tax available spending is 88,230. Once again, the traditional IRA wins. This time, however, with a smaller margin, Keep in mind, the key feature that allows the traditional IRA to win is the 22% tax bracket. Taking advantage of an immediate 22% boost to your investment is just too much for the Roth IRA to overcome. This bar chart does a great job of helping you to visualize which dollars are in the 22% tax bracket and which dollars are in the 12% or lower tax bracket. So if I were making $73,000 per year, you can see how much money here is in the 0% standard deduction bracket, how much is in the 10% tax bracket, the 12 and the top tax bracket. In this situation is the 22% tax bracket. That's $14,425. That is more than enough to top off a traditional IRA. If I were in this situation, I would be putting all $6,500 into the traditional IRA to take advantage of that 22% tax bracket. Now, if I was making $65,000, $75, I have just enough. So this, I would do the exact same thing. I have $6,500 in that top tax bracket. I would put all of it in the traditional IRA. Now, in this situation here, if I'm only making $62,575, then I would only put $4,000 into the traditional IRA because once that $4,000 is used up, the remaining $2,500 is going to come from the 12% tax bracket. So for that, I would put 4,000 into the traditional IRA, and then I would put 2,500 into the Roth IRA. And then if I were in this situation, making 58,575 or less, you can see that all the money that you invest would be in the 12% tax bracket or lower. So in this case, I would just put all 6,500 into a Roth IRA. So here we have our answer, it depends. And this will be the answer to almost any investing question. The best course of action will depend on your specific situation. I hope this video has given you the information you need to determine which course is best for you. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video and would like to learn about the retirement account that crushes both the traditional and Roth IRA, check out this video. Until next time.